is my last ever seminar. The end of the academic year is strange and the end of your time at university or school is even stranger. There are just so many lasts, last classes, last walks past your favourite buildings, perhaps even last conversations with friends. And you're so aware that these might be lasts. Okay, I've just had my last ever seminar as an undergraduate here, which is so, so strange. I am going to go and study down in the business school, I think, because they've got really nice study spots there. And then I'm going to head into town, possibly study in town for a little bit. And then I'm meeting some friends for brunch at 12. But yeah, I will see you later. You're aware that things are going to change, but everything remains so normal in the moment. You're still walking the same hallways, you're still seeing the same people, you're having the same conversations, and yet you know everything will change soon. My Wi-Fi isn't working for some reason on campus, so I'm going to head into town instead, I think. This is actually, funnily enough, the last time I'm going to be on campus. At some point, I need to return some books to the library when I come back in May, but for this term, this is the last time on campus. I know I'm probably being really dramatic, but I've been here for four years, and so, and also like two years of it was basically online, but it's still strange, and I'm kind of feeling a little out of body as I'm walking down Forum Hill. I did stay on campus for a little bit and then I came straight home as opposed to going into town because I'm actually meeting them at two and I just thought it made more sense. Also, I'm weirdly suddenly feeling just not very good, feeling a bit ill. I just wanted to come home. So um, I've finished up with something dissertation related I needed to do, like it was a follow up from the meeting that I had yesterday with my dissertation supervisor. Now my plan is to do some writing. I think I might just take a 10 minute break until 12. It's currently 10 to 12, because as I say, I'm just not feeling too great. I'm just gonna lie down for 10 minutes and maybe get myself some tea and hope that I feel better. One thing I've been thinking about a lot actually is what is it actually going to be like to be out of the academic space? like. We start school when we're three to five years old. So, so young, you know, formative years where we haven't even really gained a sense of identity yet. We form that while we're at school. We form that within this academic space. And I feel like so much of myself is tied up to academics. Um, and not entirely, but also it's hard to imagine myself outside of that structure just because it's always been there. It's nearly half past one and yes, I've changed because this morning it was quite cold, but the temperature has picked up and so I've changed into something a bit cooler. Um, and I have been writing for the last maybe, how long? Like hour and 15 minutes. And I'm gonna write for 15 more minutes before heading into town to meet some friends for lunch. That's just how I think about time, how I think about the structure of a year. I think about it in terms of holidays and like new academic years. The new year doesn't start in January, it starts in September. And I can't imagine just snapping out of that. Okay, it's now quarter two and I'm gonna pack my bag, otherwise I'm gonna be late. I'm probably going to be late still, even if I leave now. I was gonna bring my laptop, but actually thinking about it, I am gonna have to come straight back and go to trampolining. And so I'm just going to bring probably my camera and money and phone. Is that everything I need? There's this quote from Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book actually, which I just wanted to share with you quickly. You're always you and that doesn't change and you're always changing and there's nothing you can do about it. And I think it's quite a comforting thought. Like the essence, the core of you isn't tied up to academics. However much time you might spend thinking about academics. 
said some things I felt that you should know. I need a day to clear my mind and leave it all behind. It's gonna be okay, no matter come what may, I'm gonna set things straight. I don't know why I thought this would be a relevant thing to add on to this video but when I go to trampolining or swimming or yoga or something I have like my sports bag which is my old Kanken that I'd use for university and I thought I'd just show you what I keep in here. First of all these are the pins I have on it. I've got this Lisa Simpson one, a boat, this is a world food program one and then this is a charity pin that I sell on my website. The first in the front compartment I have got a mini notebook and a pen because I never go anywhere without my notebook. Hand sanitizer and then two energy bars. I always keep a protein bar in my bag um, just in case I get hungry, obviously. And then in the main compartment, I mean, I don't keep very much in here at all, as you can see. It's just a few bits. I'll add my water bottle just before I leave, but I always bring a water bottle, of course. And I'll also always add the book I'm reading. But the things that are always in here are, first of all, a jumper. Like, I just keep a sweatshirt in case... I get cold. And then for swimming, I have a mini talcum powder. Also, my goggles, which are prescription goggles as well, which are really useful. And also some shampoo for washing my hair afterwards. Oh, and I also have a glasses case for taking my glasses off while I'm swimming. Then I have a scrunchie. And for yoga, I've got these yoga socks. And also this lavender eye mask. You kind of just put it over your eyes and it smells so nice everyone in my family has one of these and at the end of a yoga class you will lie in the corpse position and just lie there for a few minutes and it's so relaxing wearing this at the same time and then the final thing is just this tiny pouch which honestly i don't think i've ever used anything in here but i still bring it just in case i've got plaster a spare contact case in case i forget to take my contacts out before swimming a deodorant and finally some tiger balm, which is which is good for your muscles if they're aching. Um, but yeah, that's everything in that sports bag. it's especially hard to think about a life like after academics after university at the end of the year because it's the most intense period and we've got so many deadlines there are you know so many loose ends to tie up you're saying goodbye to people there are just so many things to do that you're saturated in that culture and so the idea of it suddenly ending like ending very abruptly is particularly strange I found that at least, um, and it was very odd to just suddenly kind of leave university and then I, now I'm at home and it's kind of over as I knew it. Blakey and I are having an afternoon tea to celebrate the, well, our last seminar. Yeah, although we got one Friday. But it's not a seminar, it's a workshop. Oh, and it's true. in a coffee shop. Yeah, it does feel weird. Oh no, I didn't fully appreciate the last seminar. That it was a case. big deal. But you're appreciating you it right now. I've got to say that even though I am I am sad to be leaving university, I do feel like I am ready to finish my degree. Which I didn't think I would end up saying. Um I wouldn't have said that six months ago. But I think I've kind of come to terms with the fact that I am finishing my degree and um, that I am, you know, handing in my last piece of coursework and my dissertation next month. And I think it's exciting, like, that anyone leaving school, leaving university this year, it's exciting what comes next. We need to hold on to that. Appreciate the present moment, make the most of it now, but also remember that there is a lot of exciting things to come.
I wanted to film a night routine before finishing term, um, but I didn't quite manage to film a full night routine. I just thought I'd add my night routine onto the end of this video. Today I was coming back from an internship, but a lot of the time I would be coming back from a cafe. I've, I've been writing a lot in cafes this term, and I would tend to get back from a cafe at about five or six. When I get back, the first thing I always do is boil the kettle for some tea. Whilst the kettle was boiling, I unpacked my bag. I'd had a packed lunch on campus today, so I will just wash up my Tupperware. Then I just dropped my bag upstairs and I grabbed my mug as well because it was upstairs from this morning and I quickly washed that up. Today I was having the Feel New Tea by Paco which is one of my absolute favourites. It's definitely in the top five, if not the top three. I just always feel really good after drinking this one. This is actually pretty soapy so I think I might re-top that up, but I did not rinse that out well enough. I do really enjoy tea, but not soapy tea, I've got to say. And I always get myself a snack in the afternoon. Um, today I just wanted something quick, so I had this quick bar. emails. After doing emails, I will watch a few YouTube videos or reading or reading the news, just doing something which isn't on my to-do list per se. And after that, I got started on some studying and I was actually still hungry after that cliff bar. So I also got myself a crumpet and I just like to spend a good few hours doing studying in the evening. I don't really work that well. I'm not very productive in the early afternoon. So from about one o'clock to four o'clock, um, I prefer studying in the mornings and any time after four and so I was just making the most of the fact that I was feeling motivated and productive here. In the afternoons I like to do writing so I will just work on my book or do some work for my creative writing module um, but I spend my mornings doing dissertation work and my afternoons slash evenings writing. So then before dinner I like to take out my contact lenses because I have a terrible habit of leaving them in for too long and that's not very good for your eyes, so I tried to do that before dinner. And then I went down and had dinner. Blakely and I made dinner together this evening and we also baked some brownies, but I didn't film that. Um, I just completely forgot to film and hence why I felt like I couldn't upload this as a full night routine because it's not a full night routine and I didn't film everything I did this evening. But then back in my room afterwards and went to have a shower. Then before bed, I will tidy my room and put away my clothes. And then I got myself a kombucha and sat back down at my desk. I like to spend about 40 minutes doing admin tasks in the evening. So these are just small tasks, things that don't necessarily require that much brain power, but equally are important. Um, and that I do need to take off my to-do list because I I'm usually quite tired at this point and in the morning when I'm feeling really motivated, in the late afternoon when I'm feeling really motivated and my focus is really good, I don't want to be doing small tasks which don't actually require that much brain power so I prefer to save these for the evening when I know I don't necessarily concentrate as well but it doesn't matter because the tasks don't require concentration. And then again as I say, incomplete night routine. I didn't film the 
other things that I will do right before bed, which is just reading and skincare and brushing my teeth, etc. But I hope you enjoyed this little segment of the video anyway. Thank you for watching today's video um, and I hope that you have a productive week.